So how did you come up with the idea for Alice and Jack? Well, um, I have uh, for a long, long time, uh, decades, been uh, thinking about the question, are the bonds that tie us together stronger than the forces that would tear us apart? And uh, of course the trick is coming up with a story that uh, uh, brings that question to life. Right. Um, it, it's, it isn't easy, it takes a while, it took me a while, maybe it's easy for other people, but it took me a while. Um, and uh, I think it's, a, I think it's a, a very important question, you know, especially in a divided world. Right, definitely. Uh, and uh, when did you first start writing in general? Have you been a writer your whole life? Uh, it, pretty much. I, I My first job out of college was as an advertising copywriter. Oh. And I did that for seven years before and, and, wrote, and wrote my TV and film scripts at night. Uh, and then after seven years, I, I was lucky enough, one of the scripts found its way to the right place. And I was lucky enough to get a job uh, out here in Los Angeles. So I left New York, came to LA, started working on um, half hour comedies and uh, went from one to the next until I got to uh, Mad About You, which was a really formative experience for me. Uh, and as much as, you know, it was such a good show. And I'm talking about before I ever got there. You know, I can take no credit for getting it off the ground, but I came in the third season and it was such a good show with such wonderful actors and such a, a fabulous uh, track record. And I, I, I was able to, uh, you know, to, to write it to people's satisfaction and I really enjoyed it and, and things kind of uh, uh, took off a bit from there. I was able to uh, write a couple of movies and and uh, work on a couple of the great TV shows and uh, eventually create Alice and Jack, which you know took six years in and of itself. Uh, in addition to all the years previous about thinking about it and trying mm -hmm. stories that were just miserable failures, I can tell you. Uh, at some point about six years ago, I walked into the office of um, the wonderful uh, producer, Michael London, you'll know his work from Sideways and The Visitor and uh, Trumbo and, and, and Smilf, lots of fantastic work. And I said, here's what I, I think I want to do. What do you think? And he, he loved it. Uh, and, and so I wrote the first one, the, the pilot and the last one. And then I wrote a, a story document for the, the, the story that took place in between and this is what we sent uh, out to actors and to uh, uh, and to buyers. And it was a good way to do it because, it, you know, it's the kind of idea I felt that, uh, and Michael agreed, that required some execution that, that, that was particularly difficult to uh, pitch, as we call it out here, you know, and, and, and assume that people were going to get the nuances. Right. Uh, you, you've written some of my favorite shows, Mad About You. I have a section on my site for Mad About You and also Mad Men. And uh, yeah. love, That's love... on the site, by the way. It's lots of fun. Oh, thank you. And uh, I love Dream On. You, you worked on that. I did, yeah, I did, uh, yeah. There's another one, but now I can't think of it. But anyway, I, I love your work. So. <laughs> well, thank, you. thank you very much. I, I was very lucky to, to, you know, to get those to get those jobs. I mean, those are the, those are wonderful shows with wonderful people, really fantastic actors who make you look like a good writer, you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt were so good yeah. that if you that if you sent over a script that was good, the 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 show came back great. They just added so much value. They were they were so they completed each other's sentences. They found laughter that was that was in in the vapors, you know, right. and they and they um and they just uh, they were so smart and lovely. Yeah. So both, both the, I, my advice to my <laughs> advice to writers is is have wonderful actors and wonderful producers <laughs> around good. you. That's that's good. Um. So um, I was going to ask you something else that I just thought of, but um, oh, your advertising experience uh must have come in handy when you were working on Mad Men. 
Uh, I mean, it was it was a different era, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because I worked in the '80s, and Mad right. Men's advertising years were principally principally in the '60s. Mm -hmm. But there were some things that held over and informed, uh, you know, the things that I that I pitched. Uh, for example, the act of pitching, mm -hmm. which hadn't really uh, pitching commercials, that is, which hadn't really changed that much in the time between the sixties and when I was doing it, you know, you are in there with an easel and like Don Draper was and, uh, right. uh, trying to, trying to make a good speech <clears throat> for, you know, people who are not show business people or, or writers or, or, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, necessarily artistically minded that much mostly what they're trying to do is sell whatever their product oh, is so you've, right, got yeah. to, you've got to sort of get up there and be aware of who your audience is and and try to and try to uh, at the same time bring the, the the creative value in a way that they they don't find off-putting that they feel serves uh, their goals so so that was helpful yeah I mean it makes you comfortable in in, yeah. in a room and it makes you you know, it, if I think the most important thing about it is that you you are forced you are forced to put yourself in the position of the uh, listener, mm -hmm. and and I think that's a wonderful lesson for everybody. You know, everybody who wants to write or or act or or direct certainly or anything. You know, to 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 just for a moment imagine that you are the audience and that you are the one taking this in. What is there? You know what, what are going to be their uh, reactions? Uh, what are their priorities? How are they going to feel about what's going on? You know, you can't be too insular and self-directed right. about this, or it's or it's it's not going to go well. You you know you got to have some empathy, and that, I, honestly, that ties back to to uh, you know to Alice and Jack because it's you are looking for the bonds between yourself and and the people who you hope will make your commercial or your. TV show or your right. uh, film. And uh, the easel thing reminded me because you're, I'm about the same age you are. We were both born in 1961. Uh, did you grow up watching Darren Stevens pitching ads on uh, Bewitched? It, well, you know, it wasn't really Darren Stevens. I mean, that was a little bit before my time. I'm sure I saw the reruns yeah. uh, a little bit, but his job didn't really register with me as a, as a, boy watching tv you know uh, it was mostly that i wanted to be a writer mm -hmm. and these people were the only people who would hire me when oh, i was I, I mean i mean uh i had published a play but you, you, it's very hard to make money that way right and uh i i thought you know who's who's going to who's going to pay me a little something for my wares and young and rubicam uh, offered me a job as a junior copywriter. I, I don't quote me, but I think I was making thirteen thousand five hundred dollars a year. And I like that, you know. this is nineteen eighty three, yeah. and and uh, a year, by the way, a year, uh, living living on Grand Street and the FDR Drive in in Lower Manhattan. And you know, it's a forty minute. You got to take a bus and then a train and then you got to walk. And uh, and there were a whole slew of us, you know who were uh, 22, 23, something like this. Uh, and YNR, Young Group Cam, was forward-thinking enough to hire a bunch of young people. You didn't really have to have uh, an expertise in advertising or even a particular love for it. You just had to have what they thought was a good imagination, and they would teach you the rest. So in we came, there were a bunch of us, in we came, to this wonderful building on Madison Avenue, 285 Madison Avenue. And uh, it was, I think it was 26 stories and we all knew each other. And before long, we all knew almost everyone in the building, it seemed. I mean, you would travel the floors to see your friends. It was sort of like college. It was like a <laughs> vertical campus. And, you know, we learned how to work for a living. We learned how to how to work together. We learned, you know, how how art and words can match up uh, I'm still friends with a whole bunch of those people, oh, uh, nice. and you know, so, so that that was that was a, a a wonderful experience. I'll always be grateful to that company. Cool. So, um, Alice and Jack is described as the highs and lows of a 16 year off and on romantic relationship. Uh, are the entire 16 years 
covered in the sixth episode or will there be more seasons forthcoming? Uh, the entire years are covered in the in the okay. first season. I, I, I watched part of, uh, I watched the beginning and I haven't had time to watch the rest yet. Just so. <laughs> I would have normally, but they didn't tell me about the interview to yesterday and I'm- Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, how okay. how uh, how far in are you? Uh, I think I watched the first episode and that's it. Sorry. I, okay. So you got a you got a long way to go. I hope you yes, like it. Call okay. me back and tell me if you like it. I hope All you right. like. It. So, uh tell us about how you cast the two stars, Andrea and Domino. Uh so uh Andrea and Donal were my first choices from the very 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 beginning. And you never get your first choices. Suzanne, I mean never. You ne right. you just never do. And but we did this time. That's great. I, you know, I couldn't believe it. It was it was science fiction that that, <laughs> that they both said yes, but they but Donal wasn't available right away. Andrea said yes in the you know at the at the start of our search for production and and uh, and a platform etc. And Donal was busy, so he, we had to wait a little while before he could say yes. But then he did, and I, I never thought about anyone else in the role because they have such wonderful voices mm -hmm. and they they create music when they speak and they're wonderful listeners and i knew that a lot of the story would be played on the face of the person who was receiving information you know like we said a moment ago about the about the people that you're pitching to sometimes the way to tell a story is watching someone take take things in rather than deliver them. And, uh, you know, to me, sound and dialogue are music. Mm -hmm. I think sure. I think the sound of dialogue is a greatly uh, overlooked element of moving picture work, both in television and in film. I think it has a melody and a rhythm that is as important as anything else in, in the piece. And I knew that they were wonderful at that, just wonderful at that. You know, uh, originally the story was set in New York, but had it been set in New York, I would still have wanted Andrea to speak in her wonderful Geordie accent and, and Donal to speak in his wonderful Dublin, you know, and and I would have written a backstory as to how they got to New York because, because there is something just so gorgeous about it. Uh, yes, to an American ear, Americans love accents. I understand that. But even within that context, these people are remarkable speakers, remarkable listeners, so expressive with their faces, able to deliver so much subtlety. And by the way, really funny and smart and, uh, you, you know, uh, I think uniquely able out of 8.1 billion people on earth to to deliver the characters that I had in my head. So I was thr I was absolutely thrilled. I couldn't believe I couldn't believe how this was going. And the show aired on Valentine's Day in the UK and it airs here uh, March 17th. Uh, what yeah. kind of reaction did it get in the UK? Well, I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to check with them. I mean, there was a lot of lovely stuff written um, and it's it, it's uh, I'm still sort of sifting through it. I try not to pay too much attention really because I think it's I think it's um, it's sort of stressful and and difficult for anybody to to study those things. Yeah. I try to just I try to just believe in quality and hope that that the people who write about it uh, agree with me. And I think the more that people see of of this particular show, since it is a serialized story, a story mm -hmm. that you know you you have to uh, you really do have to follow through right. to the end before you really know what it is. Right. Uh, I think I can say. You know, I think the I think the more you watch, the more you understand, and the more you understand, the more uh, uh, informed and and authoritative your your reaction can be. So uh, I hope that the people who write about it both there and over here uh, watch it all the way through. I know they're very busy and everybody's doing their best, and they got a lot of things to do. But uh, you know, I, I I hope that in this case they watch it all the way through. Okay, and uh, you're also a writer and executive producer of Extended Family on NBC, correct? Yes, yes. And are yeah. you still working on that now? Well, we just finished our production oh. run. We're still, but we're still in editing. We're still in post. 
with the wonderful John Cryer and Abigail Spencer and Donald Faison and the and the brilliant creator of the show, Mike O'Malley, mm-hmm. uh, with whom I've worked twice in the past, uh, once on his show Heels, which was which I just adored, and once on his show Survivor's Remorse, uh, both of those were on Stars, and Survivor's Remorse, which was a comedy uh, in the uh, 20-teens, late 20-teens, mid- middle to late, um, was uh, was a phenomenal experience. So anytime Mike calls, if I am uh, upright and breathing, I say yes. He's a, yeah. he's, a, he's a dear friend and a real genius. You would know him also as an actor from- mm-hmm. Yeah, and- I watched his series- um- yeah. Many of the series, and I, and I watched Heels, and I was in the Stars um, TCA for that. So I've I've seen him, and yeah, he's really good. <laughs> he's a, he's a multi hyphenate, and a, yeah, and a, definitely. Um, a, 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 he's fantastic at this. And uh, how did so he basically the project came about because he called and you answered and said yes or what? <laughs> no, no, he created the project first. Right. Um, it, it's it's. It's no, loosely, I it's loosely for you. Oh, for me. Yeah. He called me up. He said, you want to read this and tell me if you want to work on it. And I said, yes, absolutely. Okay. And so, um, you know, but he had already done that, the heavy lifting at that point, he sure. had already written the pilot and John Cryer had, had loved it and it, it already had a, a home. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's just, wonderful when that happens i mean when the phone rings and you 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 have a job that you're not only you have a job but you have a job with people like that yeah and uh, i'm sorry i interrupted you says loosely based on oh uh uh, on real people who um when they got divorced uh chose to keep the family home and take turns living in it Hmm. And uh, rather than sell the family home and make the kids yeah. go back and forth or anything sure. like that. Uh, but then Abigail Spencer's character falls in love with the um, leader of the consortium that owns the Boston Celtics. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and that and that is so that's a little bit of a twist on yeah. uh, on the story. And so these three people have to get along, which they do. And but it's funny because, you know, her first husband didn't own the Boston Celtics. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, uh, so there's, there's a, but people are people. And, yeah. you know, it's funny, this conversation is, is, is taking on a certain underlying theme. They have to look for the bonds between and among them as well. Right. I think there was, wasn't there a show starring Fran Drescher where she was divorced and I think her husband lived next door. I uh, don't know. I don't know. Divorced they're, they're, ever after, or something like that. It was on. T- it was that the one with John Michael Higgins? Is that? Uh, yes, I think so. I think. Yeah, so. yeah. He's an old friend, also. Oh, he's, he's great. Yeah. He's. Yeah. I mean, he's. Listen, he's. He was in a Mad About You or two. There were he, so many people in that show. <laughs> he played. <laughs> if you can believe it, if you can believe it, he he. We call him Michael. Michael played um, Carol Burnett's boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't remember. um yeah no i think i think i first saw him on uh didn't he play ellie mcbeal's therapist years ago gosh i don't know i'm sorry but you know christopher guest and and i know him since college because we went to the same and he's he's brilliant i mean he this this is a guy who when he's when he comes to work in those days when he would come Mm -hmm. to when he came to mad about you in between his bits he would be sitting in his chair reading the new york times from cover to cover Wow. I don't know too many people who just <laughs> read the page and then they turn it and then they read the next page and then they turn it and they read it. <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal brain. Cool. Uh, and uh, do you have any other projects coming out that you can tell us? I, about? I, I, I do have projects on the um, on the workbench, uh, but they're not ready to talk about uh, yet. I, my plan is to write the next one uh, as fully and completely as I can before sending it out to actors and to buyers. Um, you know, I I liked the way that went this time and uh, it's something I'd like to replicate again. I think that the less you leave to interpretation, the better. Mm-hmm. And I feel like 
if people are seeing actual dramatic moments and being moved by them, you know, reading jokes and 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 laughing as a result of them, that you've got a you've got a better chance. You know, I don't have these giant ideas, Suzanne. You know, asteroids coming to the <laughs> earth. We have five minutes to say, you know, the uh, I've switched bodies with the lady down the street. I don't have those ideas. I my ideas are small and they rely on on uh, nuance. And, and so I think it's worth it to spend the time writing the scripts and, and give the people a, 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 a polished version of what you're talking about, instead of trying to talk about it in a forum like this, because let's mm -hmm. face it, most of the pitches are on zoom now. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and I think it's important to put your best foot forward. And here's the other thing you, you create an asset, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if it does, if it doesn't sell as a television show, maybe it's a novel. I will have done the hard work. Right. Sure. That makes I, sense. I know the story. I know what happens. I know where it happens. So maybe it's maybe it was meant to be a novel. I I, I believe in especially as you get a little older, it, you know, trying to trying to uh, create actual stuff mm -hmm. rather than discussions about stuff. Right. That makes sense. Um, I just I just thought of another question because of what you said. It's it sounds like maybe you were influenced quite a bit by Matthew Weiner of Mad Men. Well, the, this is I mean, the phrase is is uh, look, the phrase is is used a lot, but he is a generational talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is a fantastic writer and not just a fantastic writer, but a fantastic producer. He knows in his mind, exactly what he wants to see, what he wants to hear. When he sits with that page, stuff comes out that he is the only one on earth who could write. Hmm. I'm telling you, this guy is wonderful. And so uh, just being around that, just being around the quality, the attention to detail, the uh, exquisite knowledge of what one is trying to do, was was fantastic in terms of influence because all you could say to yourself is gosh i want to be that much in command of my own subject i want to be you know that that completely sure of what it is that this show should be saying and how it should be saying it and where the line is between you know uh saying enough and and saying too much i mean this is uh this is a every job is an education in one way or another Every project is an education in one way or another. And one of the things you have to do, and it doesn't matter if you're an actor or director, writer, executive, anything, is pay attention to those bits of education because it makes you better next time. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a great example of that. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking to me today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so right. much. And I'm going to definitely watch the rest of that show and, 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 um, uh, um, extended family as well i haven't had time to even catch that one yet but i keep saying please, just, that it looks funny please send word over the uh over the transom of what you think of both okay all right thank you bye, -bye. thank you very much bye